Howdy. Howdy. I had this very vivid memory of a time when I was nine years old. I was sitting on the couch in my parents' living room, God's rays shining through a big window behind me. And in my lap was this huge, flimsy styrofoam plate filled to the brim with one of my mama's famous breakfasts. On that plate was bacon, eggs, toast so buttery that you could see clear through to the other side, and my absolute favorite, grits with sugar. On this particular day, I don't know why, but I was extremely tired and I fell asleep. And I woke up to what I can only imagine hot lava feels like running down my legs. So I did what any self-respecting nine-year-old boy would do. I cried for my mama. My mama rushed in. She said, Dustin, baby, what's wrong? And all I could muster up was the, the grits. She looked at the grits running down my legs and the grits on her new couch. And that look of anguish on her face turned to a look of disdain. Finish your breakfast. And she walked back to her room. Now, I don't know what hurt most. The fact that I had grits running down my legs or the fact that my mama really didn't care. See, all my mama cared about was that I finished my breakfast. In the fall of 2003, I entered Texas A&M as a music major. I loved music, that was my passion. I think I joined almost every singing organization I could on campus. I was doing more singing than studying. And so uh, I was kicked out of the, the music department. I was in between majors for a while, and then I became an anthropology major. And then I became an English major. And then I became a sociology major, and I stayed there for a little bit because I really liked sociology. I was traveling back and forth between College Station and Austin, Texas, performing with a band, and it began to wear on me. I would gas up that 1998 Emerald Green Honda Civic. Her name was Faith. I called her Faith because I had to have faith that she would start. I had to have faith that she wouldn't die on the side of the road, and I, and I had to have faith that she wouldn't overheat. So me and Faith riding down 290, she all but fell apart, and so did I. I wasn't studying. So I was kicked out of the sociology department. I went to an advisor to see what the next step would be because I did want to finish. And um, the advisor looked at my transcript and he looked at me and he said, I'm sorry, Mr. Kemp, you will not graduate from Texas A&M University. Now clearly we didn't speak the same language because I didn't understand a word that he said. All I knew is that I wanted to finish school. So then I became an agricultural leadership and development major. I was doing a little bit better, but I was still traveling back and forth between Austin and College Station, Austin College Station. And after failing my last horticulture exam, I called my good friend and bandmate Ross Falcon. I said, come get me, man. I'm done, bruh. He didn't ask questions. We just piled up that 2002 midnight blue Toyota Corolla and I hit Austin, Texas, and I never looked back. Now what? Living in Austin, Texas was extremely difficult for me. All of my bandmates had college degrees, and I didn't. A&M haunted my dreams. I had this reoccurring dream of myself kneeling on the edge of my bed in front of a window in my cap and gown on the day of graduation. But I knew that that dream couldn't mean anything because that voice in the back of my head said, you will not graduate from Texas A&M. So the band played on. We were fairly successful. Shows, recorded albums, music videos. We had two songs on hit TV shows, Nashville and the Fosters. But it wasn't enough for me. I mean, when I tell you A&M haunted me, everywhere I went, somebody was wearing an A&M shirt. There were decals and bumper stickers, and every baby had an A&M onesie on, and 
every dog, I'm telling y'all, looks like Reveille. It haunted my life. I thought about the possibility of going back. But I kept hearing that, that voice in the back of my head, you will not graduate from Texas A&M. I talked to my bandmates about the possibility of going back to school, and that conversation didn't go over so well. So I called my mama. And my mom said, Dustin, you just need to take a step out on faith. I said, my car? She said, no, not your car. <laughs> just trust in God's plan. Now, living in Austin, battling depression, I didn't really know what I believed anymore, but I believed that my mama had a direct connect to God, so I tended to trust in what she said. I wanted to go back to school. Wednesday, December 31st, 2014, a day that I will never forget, I was sitting on my mama's couch. I had strep throat, hurt like hell, and I could barely swallow. I got an email from one of my bandmates saying that the band was done and that we needed to move in a new direction. If you can imagine, that's a hard thing to swallow as well. I sat there on that couch and I cried because I didn't have a college degree and everything that I worked so hard for was being taken away from me. My mother walked in and she said, now you know what you need to do. You need to finish. At that point, I didn't know if it was even a possibility. So I called the ALEC department at Texas A&M and I spoke to her, Ms. Charlene Bogus. I told her my story, she looked at my transcript, and she said, why didn't you finish? You were so close. I told her about my fears about reapplying, and she said, just reapply. So I did, and I waited. Months later, I received a letter from Texas A&M congratulating me on being readmitted. I didn't think that would happen. If you see my transcript, so, in the back of my mind, you will not graduate from Texas A&M. It was still a fear. But I knew that I had to move forward. In the fall of 2015, I gassed up that midnight blue Toyota Corolla, the same Corolla that took me away from Texas A&M. I was driving back. I hit the college station city limits with about half a tank of gas, $99. I didn't have a job. I didn't know where I was going to live, but I registered for those classes. I found my mentor, Dr. Danielle Harris. I hadn't seen her in years. She embraced me and then gently pushed me away, and she gave me a look that only Dr. Danielle Harris can give you. And she said, are you ready to finish? We walked around the building brainstorming ways to work, places to live, and we ran into Dr. Corliss Outley. And before Dr. Harris could introduce me, Dr. Outley said, Dustin Kemp. Dr. Harris asked her if, there was, if she had a position for me. Dr. Outley looked at me and she said, if I hire you, are you gonna finish? And then she took me to meet Dr. Asha Brown, and I was hired as their student worker. Now, when I felt like I was wearing out my welcome on my friends' couches, I would find a random apartment complex parking lot, and I would sleep in my car. Most nights that first semester, I did sleep in my car. I came into work sluggish one day, and Dr. Brown asked me, wait, where do you stay? And when I told her, she said, no, come stay with me. Don't worry, just finish. I finished that first year at Texas A&M with one semester left. Dr. Brown graduated and I didn't have a plan on what to do next and I couldn't afford my last semester. I heard that voice in the back of my head again, you will not graduate from Texas A&M. I remember walking around what I thought was the whole city of College Station too afraid to ask my parents to come and pick me up. It was a night I won't forget, I slept on the steps of the administration building. I woke up with the sun 
And I finally gathered the courage to call my dad and ask him to come and pick me up. I went home that summer defeated, that voice still in my head. My grandmother called me asking me when I was coming to see her. And she also asked me, do you need some money for school? My mom had dimed me out like she always does. I told my grandmother, no, I don't need any money for school. But I did go and see her at 9 o'clock one morning. And we watched about 200 episodes of Family Feud. That's what we do. <laughs> the whole while, I was trying to muster up the courage to say, Mama Let, yes, I do need help paying for this last semester. So at around 11.30 that night, I got up to go and I said, Mama Let, thank you for everything that you've done for me. And I must admit, I do need help paying for this last semester. And she slowly looked up at me. You waited all this time, and I could have been wrote you a check. She went into her purse. She pulled out her checkbook, and she began to write my name. And I watched those hands that used to write so smooth and cursive on my Christmas cards, my grandchildren's Christmas cards every year. They didn't write so smooth anymore. I noticed the pain and the pressure as she wrote my name, and I acknowledged her sacrifice in my eyes welled up with tears. And I said, Mama Let, thank you. I will pay you back. She slowly pulled the check out of the checkbook and she said, just finish. I headed back to College Station for my final semester at Texas A&M. Every morning, I would point at Reed Arena because I was determined to graduate. Thankful to a connection with, through the band, I found a place to live. Slowly that voice that told me that I would not graduate began to fade a bit. And on December 16, 2016, my dream came to life as I found myself kneeling down at the edge of my bed on the day of my graduation. And I heard the sweetest sound, Dustin Gerard Kemp. 13 years after I entered Texas A&M University, I was a college graduate. I got in the car with my mother, my grandmother, and my sister, and I looked back at them, and I admitted to them, I didn't think I was going to make it. And my grandmother, sitting in the back seat, smirked, and she said, I always knew. You see, life is not about the people that said you couldn't make it. It's about the people who have been there with you every step of the way. My grandmother knew that I could make it. And it's because of these connections that I'm here today. My mother, Ms. Charlene Bogus, Dr. Danielle Harris, Dr. Corliss Outley, Dr. Asha Brown, I'm so grateful for their lights in my life. Ubuntu, I am because we are. I am because they are. And because of them, I've dedicated my life to being the me that I needed when I was at Texas A&M. And so this is to them. This is to my grandmothers, who are the strongest women that I know. This is for my mother and father who lost everything that they had, recovered, and had a house built for their children. This is for those hungry nights, those homeless nights. This is for that creamy chicken ramen noodles that was, didn't taste all that good. This is for Philosophy 240 with two of the greatest people that I think I'll ever meet. This is for a couple that met me at a march, a Dr. Martin Luther King march, and took me in as their son. This is for that professor that told me to keep going. This is for that mentor that reminded me to trust myself. This is for those nights of depression in Austin, Texas, riding with my friend Josh, harmonizing, and him always letting me be Beyonce. 
This is for the $7 that made the difference in me registering for my first classes because of Abel. This is because of my family and for my family, for my brother and sister who look at me as a rock star. Understand that in this life, progress is a process, and everyone's process is completely different. And you must trust the process. And understand that life is going to send challenges your way, and you're going to have to wade the waters, and you're going to have to weather the storm, and storms will come, but we must learn to play in the rain. My band had a song that was a message, and I would get emails from all over the world from people saying that we touched their lives. And little did they know that they were encouraging me and touching mine. And the message was this. Well, you can get up, but stay on the ground, hoping for fate to turn it all around. When things fall apart, the world will still turn. Stars fall, bridges burn. Pick, pick, pick it up. You live, you learn. No life won't let you down. 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 You see, grits. Grit is about squaring your shoulders, looking your opponent in the eye, and not, being, not running away. You might be a little afraid, but you stand there. You plant your feet. Grit is about wading those waters, but also being able to pull someone else up and help them to wade with you. You might even have to carry them on your back. I'm so grateful for the people in my life, the connectors, who make me who I am today. Again, Ubuntu, I am because they are. And one thing that I've learned, you always eat your grits, no matter how hot they are. Thank you. <laughs>